Why bats, Master Wayne? Bats frightened me. This time my enemies shared my dread. I first became interested in, in taking on Batman when I heard that Warner Brothers was looking to renew and reinvent the franchise. I'd uh, made my last film at Warner Brothers, so I was able to go to them and explain to them the way I saw the Batman franchise being interestingly reinvented. From the beginning, my interest was in taking on a superhero story, but treating it in a realistic fashion. I've always been a big fan of the character, but I am by no means any kind of comic book expert. I felt I needed a writer on the project who really knew the character inside out, really knew the comic world. Chris's agent rang me up one day. I'd always wanted to write a Batman movie. I remember telling my mother when I was a kid that I was gonna go to Hollywood one day and do a Batman film. And in a way, I'd been waiting my whole life for this call. David, unfortunately at that time, said he couldn't possibly write on the script because he only had eight or nine weeks until he was going to go off to, to direct. I said, if I did do it, this is what I would do, and you can just have my ideas for free. And, and I talked for about an hour and spitballed a large amount of what the film is. And Chris said, wow, that sounds great. He went away again for a few more days. I got a call again saying, you have to do this, you have to do this. I guess he's just such a big fan of the character, he couldn't resist carving out the time to just come on board and work out the story with me and then write the first draft. One of the ironies of this film is it's, it's this massive, massive movie. But the way that the film was created were in, in sort of very humble settings, so to speak. David and I would meet at my house, out the back of my garage, in my office, and, and throw ideas around and, and really start working out the major beats. It was clear to me that if they were going to restart the Batman franchise, something very dramatic would have to be done, something very different. In my opinion, we had to go backwards and tell Batman's origin story. The origin story had never been addressed on, on film or really even in the comics. Uh, that is to say, there isn't really a single definitive account of, of uh, the journey of Bruce Wayne into Batman. David Gore and myself drew very heavily on this great history of this character. It's these key events in Bruce Wayne's life that we know of, and then a lot of very interesting gaps that we were able to interpret ourselves, and, and those we took to be the most important elements of what makes Batman the great legend that he is. As David was writing his first draft and we were fully working out the story, I actually uh, brought on Nathan Crowley, my designer, and moved him into the garage to start working on the key design elements. It was in August in LA in the garage with the washing machines, so we had to take the day off when the cleaner came around because they'd leave the dryers on and get way too hot. It's a really interesting way to work because we, you know, would feed each other information and Nathan would say, oh, I have an interesting idea, and then Chris and I would put that into the story or vice versa. By working that way, having your production designer in one room and your co-writer in another, you've really got this, you know, fantastic symbiotic thing going on that's going to give you really great uh, inspiration, which is what happened. It was very important to me that nobody see anything of what we were doing until it was finished, until we were ready to, to show different elements. We are used to working on films where you're fighting to let people know about your film. On this, we were fighting to, you know, keep it all under wraps. We had a fake name for the project that Chris came up with called The Intimidation Game, and all the documents, all the contracts, uh, the scripts, things like that were The Intimidation Game. I mean, it had nothing to do with the title of the film, but people ended up thinking it was the title of the film, which was all a little bit strange. After we finished the script, no photocopies were made for the executives at Warner Brothers. They came to Chris's house and sat in that same garage. They brought in some couches and, and read the script there. That initial stage where you're getting to really let your imagination run free and really explore ideas is one of the most fun parts of the filmmaking process. You're really trying to think and design and dream on the, the grandest scale imaginable. It was important for me in the case of this project to figure out who was going to be putting that cowl on before we really nailed down the script. There are a lot of people that would make a good Batman or there are a lot of people that would make for a good Bruce Wayne, but we couldn't find a lot of people that we thought could do both. 
The first half of our film takes place before Bruce puts on the costume for the first time. It was important to us that the audience be really invested in Bruce Wayne and not just marking time anytime he was on screen until he would put on the cape and the cowl. Christian was the, the first actor I met with, actually. And it was clear to me, looking into his eyes, that this is somebody who can make you believe in the possibility of somebody devoting their life to something this extreme. Christian was driven enough to want to move over the project that he was prepared to take a lot of things on trust in terms of what I was intending to do with the project. Because when I first met him, the script hadn't been written yet. The image that I had gotten from Chris was that he was a far more dangerous and volatile character than I'd seen him play before. Christian had a very controlled and specific approach to how he wanted to portray the aggression of this character, the animal-like quality. Uh, he talked a lot about having Batman crouching in the shadows, and he's constantly sort of crouched on railings or the sides of buildings, and very much the way he is in the comics. You just couldn't pull it off properly unless you became a beast when you were inside of that suit. When I first met Christian, he was extraordinarily thin, having lost an enormous amount of weight for uh, the machinist, which he was about to go off and shoot. He did call me and say, well, you know, how, how do you look right now, you know? Like, how, how am I gonna seriously be able to suggest to Warner Brothers that you could play Batman ever if, uh, you know, you're that skinny? He then proceeded to put on a lot of weight uh, in muscle terms and really try and bulk up because I had impressed upon him the, uh, the idea that for, for Bruce Wayne to really fill that suit, he was going to have to be very, very large. I was just stuffing my face all day long and lifting heavy weights and eating more and, uh, and eventually went, went uh, up to like 220 pounds. I hadn't met Christian and I was expecting to meet this bag of bones. And I went, oh my God. <laughs> I just listened to what he said about get as big as you possibly can. So that's what I did, you know? But I was kind of like a bear. I wasn't really like a martial arts, you know, guy all lean and ripped and everything like that. I had to very sort of gently suggest to him that he, he um, you know, cut down a bit. I could see the look on Chris's face, you know? He looked at me and it was like, oh Christ. Now, what has this guy done? There was a moment where he was really big, and we were thinking, God, is he going to fit the bat suit? Is it, you know, <laughs> how is this going to work? It was a moment of panic where I realized, oh, crap, you know? I took Chris at his exact word about get as big as you can, but he didn't really think I was going to get that big. A, a number of the crew I, I'd worked with on previous movies, they looked at me, and they were like, uh, Bloody hell, Chris, what are we doing here? Fat man or bat man? And uh, so I realized, okay, uh, <laughs> that's not what he had meant. So I had to then try and lose a lot of weight. We worked on his stamina and built his muscle tone so we could bring his body back up to uh, being what it needed to be for Batman. And Christian knew anyway, because he was such a focused uh, guy. He, he knew his own body. Good. Very nice. Christian showed extraordinary levels of self-discipline and dedication to the role to be able to do that. A lot of actors, when you uh, start working with them, they'll say they're going to lose a bit of weight for the part or whatever, and the wardrobe people will kind of roll their eyes and go, yeah, sure, because they very often don't. Um, and I had to warn the, the wardrobe people in this film that he was actually going to do what he said uh, he was going to do. It really was. It was a very tight a schedule, but I just about managed it before we started filming. I think the closest to what I saw for Batman that I, I had uh, seen in another film was probably the Dick Donner uh, Superman film from 1978. And one of the things that made that film so epic was the, the great casting. I felt that Batman deserved a, a similarly epic treatment, and so we decided to go for the best actors and the best stars possible. So the principles are all fleshed out with these wonderful uh, supporting roles. And I mean, it's just a, a spectacular cast around Christian. Just know that there are those of us who care about what you do with your future. Haven't given up on me yet.
Never. It's essential that Alfred is a credible father figure because he is the person who raises Bruce Wayne. In the Civil War, your great-great-grandfather was involved in the Underground Railroad, secretly transporting freed slaves to the North. And I suspect he found these cabins handy. Casting Michael Caine in this role allows us to create a really wonderfully rounded character who really can be a true father, surrogate father to Bruce Wayne. I will go back to Gotham and I will fight men like this, but I will not become an executioner. Bruce, please, for your own sake, there is no turning back. Liam Neeson plays Ducard, who is this mentor to Bruce. He essentially uh, teaches Bruce uh, all kinds of uh, techniques of martial arts and so forth, uh, but I think he also offers him a level of guidance and uh, at a time when Bruce is really looking for answers. What's great about Liam is Liam ultimately plays one of the villains, and he's never played a villain before. And he always plays these sort of fatherly, avuncular, mentor-like characters, which he does need to play in this film, but when he turns, he really turns. <laughs> We first talked about the character of Lucius Fox. I said to Chris, well, the only person that can play this is Morgan Freeman. We felt it was important to connect Bruce's assembling of the tools to become Batman, and uh, Lucius Fox helps him in his quest to become Batman without ever knowing exactly what Bruce's quest is. Look, Mr. Fox. Yes, sir. If you're uncomfortable. Mr. Wayne, you don't want to tell me exactly what you're doing when I'm asked. I don't have to lie. But don't think of me as an idiot. Fair enough. He knows there's something going on, but there's a sort of interesting unspoken uh, uh, understanding between the two men. Gary Oldman was an idea that Chris had, and he doesn't seem like the obvious choice given some of the roles he's played. I think Gary Oldman has never really played such a wholesome character. He's played a lot of bad guys, Gary, but he is a, he is a chameleon and he inhabits the role of, of Gordon. The really cool thing about Gary Oldman's performance in Batman Begins is that if you look at Frank Miller's Batman Year One and the depiction of Gordon in that comic, that's exactly what Gary did. I look at Gary in the movie and I don't even think of him as Gary Oldman. He just seems like Gordon. It was important for us to have a person who was close to Bruce from childhood, knew him before all of these things went wrong. Rachel, who's played by Katie Holmes, is a very strong character in her own right, and she's not at all the damsel in distress. <laughs> what these great actors bring is a sense of three-dimensional reality, the sense of a real world in which Batman and Bruce Wayne is, is functioning. And it's very satisfying to look at the, the finished product and uh, realize how much of it does stem absolutely directly from those first months where it was uh, just us on our own throwing ideas around.